Now, until now, uh, most of the examples that we went over in class were the examples that you had the code and we had to draw the finite state machine. I think we did an example that we went from the final, finite state machine to the code, uh, but I'm going to do one here so you um, understand it better. So here we have this finite state machine that we want to write the Verilog code for. Okay, so the first thing in writing a Verilog code, as you all know, we have to define our module. So we have the module and then the name of the module, we're gonna just call it problem three. Now, inside this, we have to write the outputs and inputs of this state machine. So let's look at the state machine itself. The outputs clearly are C and D that are inside these states, each of the states. And the inputs, first one is reset, right? Then what else do we have? We have the clock. We know that in a finite state machine, we're gonna have the clock as the input, but it's not shown in the state machine diagram. And then the other inputs that we have are A and B, okay? So I'm gonna just write this here. So we have output logic c and d and then input i'm going to write it here logic a b and then the other inputs that i have are reset and clock don't forget about the res uh, the clock specifically because it's not shown in the finite state machine now now we need to write our states right how many states we have so how many states do we have we have s0 s1 s2 s and s3 so we have four different states now this is one way to define the states and we never showed it like this so before you always saw for example if we had the enum we would say s0 is um for example 0 0 s1 is 0 1 S2 is 1, 0, and S3 is 1, 1. Now here, we're going to just define the same thing, but in a different way. So I can say that I have enum logic, and then two bits. Now, instead of writing S0 equal to 0, 0, S1 equal to 0, 1, like that, I'm going to just write it like this, S0, S1, S2, S3. Now, these are my states. And I also have the next state. So if you went back, if you go back to the codes that we already had for all of these um, finite state machines, you will see that we had the same thing, but it was written in a different um, format. Okay. And let me just indent this line a little bit. Okay. Now, the first thing that you have to write is the synchronous logic. So the synchronous logic is the logic that is just saying that at the positive edge of the clock, the state will start following the next state, right? So I'm going to just define the always flip-flop at pause edge of the clock. So since it's not saying anything about the edge of the clock, it means that it is a positive edge of the clock. If for some reason I want it to be a negative edge of the clock, I'm going to um, state that in the question. So at the positive edge of the clock, the state will start following the next state. And end. So this will be my sequential logic. Now we're going to start the combination of logic. So for the combination of logic, I'm going to start with always come and begin. First thing is the defaults that we're going to have, right? So for the defaults, let's go back here. See, we have 1, 1 as C and D in state S3 and S2 right? And then in S0 and S1, they're different. So what you can do, we can say that we do have two defaults. One of them is, let me just write here that we have the defaults. And then in the defaults, we have next state. So whenever we want to know if 
the next state was not defined anywhere okay in some state the next state was not defined let's just go back to a zero just as a default and then the c and d let's just call it as one one now the reason that i mentioned the default is one one is that because in those two states s2 and s3 i do have the default output so i'm just gonna leave it right like that okay now let's begin the cases so technically this will be my main logic and we're going to start the case and the case is the states so s0 we're in state s0 at the beginning so we're going to begin in s0 you see that the only difference in the output compared to the um, defaults is that c is equal to zero so we're going to say in s0 c is equal to one bit binary zero and you see that in a state s0 if b is equal to one we're going to go to s1 right so we're going to have an if here if b is equal to one bit binary one then the next state would be s1 I'm going to end this case as zero over here. Now, what if B is zero? If B is zero, I don't have any definition of B is zero inside this case, right? But I know that in the default, if B is zero, I have to go to the default and default is S zero. So we are going to be staying in S zero. So we're good. Okay. Now, then we go to a state S one. So let's start state S one. We're going to begin now in status one what is what are the outputs what is the difference between the outputs and the default outputs is that d is equal to zero so in status one d is equal to one bit binary zero and the next state from s1 is s2 no matter what right i don't have any anything over here so you don't see any conditions here. Therefore, whenever I'm in a state S1, the next state would be S2. So next state is equal to S2. And then we're going to end it. Then we go to S2. So in S2, I will begin. Let's go up here. What is happening in S2? In S2, you see that the outputs are the same as the default, so you don't need to define anything. They are already the same as the default. But whenever you are in S2, the next state would be S3. So without any condition, whenever you are in, you are in S2, you're going to go to S3. So the next state is equal to S3. And we're going to end this state. Now, the state that has the more, the most um, conditions is actually state S3. Now, for state S3, you can write it like this. So now we are in S3. So in S3, we're going to begin. We know that in S3, the outputs are one and one, the same as the, up, uh, the default output. So I don't need to change anything, but for a and b i have different values if a and b are both zeros we're going to stay in s3 if a is zero b is one we're going to go to s2 if a is one b is one we're going to go to s1 and a1 b0 we're going to go to s0 so i'm going to have another case inside the case s3 so we're going to have another case defining another case and my case is based on a and B. Now, if A and B are zero, zero, our next state is equal to S3. Right? Zero, zero, we're going to stay in S3. 
if a is 0, b is 1. So 2-bit binary, a 0, b 1. What happens to S0? S, sorry, what happens to the next state? We go to S2. <clears throat> so the next state is S2. If I have 2-bit binary 1, 0, then the next state is equal to 1, 0, is equal to S0. And the last one is actually when we go to S1, <clears throat> that is A equal to 1, B equal to 1. So this one, you can either write it as a different case, I mean, like 2-bit binary 1, 1, or you can just say that default, because that's the only one that is left from the conditions of A and B, right? So in the default, next state would be S1. Now, don't forget that oh let me just bring this a little bit to the left so the indentations are correct and then we're going to end the case here then i have to end s3 case that i opened before and then i have to end this case over here so end case again now what is Missing here, the reset is the one that is missing here, and that's called actually a priority logic. So, in the priority logic, we have if reset is equal to one bit binary one, then the next state is S0. Now we're going to end the whole always for the combination. And at the end, we're going to end the module.